Hello everybody. This is the second video in a series about how to run the optics event in Virginia. Um, if you did not see the first video about aiming the laser, please go back and watch that. It is an important prerequisite to this video. But in this video, we are going to be talking about placing the barrier mirror and the non-mirrored barriers in the, uh, the laser shoot in a consistent way for every team. This is very important because we want to make sure that every team faces the exact same challenge. And it is quite common when running this event that these, these barriers get moved around and need to be replaced in, in a very consistent way. We would prefer that people not put marks on the bottom of the boxes for this purpose or use tape uh, because that degrades the boxes over time. So instead, the method that we prefer is to make templates for this. Now, it's important, uh, important to realize that teams make templates, competitors make templates also. We're not talking about those templates. Those are going to take many different forms and, and, and be designed according to the, the team's goals. Uh, these templates are specifically for placing the barrier mirror and the two non-mirrored barriers uh, in the box uh, prior to the competition. Um, I should also note that in Division B, there is only a mirrored barrier. We're going to be showing the Division C rules, but the same techniques apply in Division B. It's just a little more complex in Division C because there are three barriers. So with that, I'm going to turn this over to Jeff, who's going to talk about making the templates. Before you make the templates, you ought to know where do you want your barriers to be. And as the event supervisor, you will be designing the barrier placement according to the level of challenge you want for the particular tournament. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to just pick out a few things. For our center line barrier, I'm going to want it uh, right there. And to do that, I'm going to make a barrier out of a cereal box square. I just took the, a cereal box and unfolded it and cut along the edges, and it gives me a nice square. So I'm going to set it in here. I'm going to line up one edge to the grid line here, the other edge flush. I'm going to put my barrier mirror where I want it. And then before I start drawing lines and cutting things, I need to think about uh, how am I going to get this template out? And what I'm going to want to do is slide the template this way. So I want it to be open on this side and that side. So I'm going to want to, my lines to be here and down here. Okay, now I'll take a little square and extend these lines a little bit to make them easy to cut. When I'm cutting it, it's probably a good idea to cut a, a little past the intersection of the two lines so that I don't end up with a hanging chad or something here. That's a a joke for older people. Okay, I got it. Let's see if it works. So if I put my template in here, I line it up with the grid line, I'm flush to the wall, I slide barrier mirror that's where i want it i can just simply slide it to the side and get the template out of there so that's now in planning this i would take it and i would label it uh, say this into the grid line this into the side this barrier mirror side here so i'll put label markings on the grid so that i do it the same each time and if i have a helper they do it the same i'll want two copies of this so i would take another cereal box line them up and draw a line and cut out an identical copy. So that's the first template. For the second non-barrier mirrors, I'm going to want them in 
something like this position, these, these two positions. Since they're so close together, it, it seems desirable to, uh, maybe we can have one template cover, set the location for both of these, and indeed we can. So in this case, I'm going to put my cereal box square in, up into the corner, place them where I want them. Now again, thinking ahead, I'm gonna to wanna to slide this template away this side. So I want open areas over here, and I'm gonna want my lines along here. So I'll draw my lines here. That's that one. And I'll draw this here. And so that's where I want those. I'll take my square again and extend these lines so I can make nice cuts. So now I'll cut out this area here. So let's check this out. I can still place it up flush here, flush there. I take my barriers. I want one here, one there, and I can slide it away easily. Again, I will label this end goes to the sidewall. This goes to the end wall. I'll label which barriers go where and which orientation so that you can see it. And then I'll make a copy, tracing a second copy of it, and we're all set. So once these are in, I would put these in first if I were setting it up, because otherwise if I had the if I had this one already there, it would knock it aside when I moved it first. So then I just take this one, set it in, slide it away, and I'm set up. I can do it the same time every time, only takes about a minute. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to watch the next video in the series about setting the target point and measuring the accuracy score.